Hey friends, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison Training and today I wanted to talk about why I let the dogs say no to me. Um, it is perfectly okay f in my opinion if a dog tells me no. Um, most fear-free trainers agree with that. Um, it's okay for a dog to say no I can't do that. It's okay for a dog to say I'm not willing to do that. It's okay for a dog to decide to turn away. Um, when we have the mentality that the dogs just always do what we ask them to do or tell them to do, we are not setting up a relationship built on understanding. We are built, building a relationship built on dictatorship and control. And I'm always looking to build relationships with dogs that are mutually beneficial. Right? I contribute to their life just as much as they contribute to mine. And I'm looking to understand my dog as an individual and understand that he has needs and that sometimes he doesn't want to have to sit. Sometimes he doesn't want to sit. Um, and if he really, really doesn't want to have to sit and he knows that I have some sort of trade for him, if he does, and he's still telling me no, then either A, my trade isn't motivating enough or something is interfering with the no. So let's back up a little bit. Let's say you have a brand new puppy, okay, who is 10 weeks old. The common idea, the um, cognitive dissonance, if we're gonna use big girl language, uh, the, the common notion is that if we let the dogs tell us no, then they're always going to say no to us, okay? Now, what I find in just my personal experience is that if I'm working with a young puppy and I give them opportunities to tell me no, I may see them tell me no more commonly at first, but still not as common as you think it would be because they're still understanding that I'm going to trade them if they give me the behavior. So let's just say I'm asking for a touch, right? They understand that I'm going to pay them if they give me the touch, and if they don't give me the touch, they're not getting paid. Like nothing bad happens, but they're not getting the, the reinforcement, right? So they understand that and they're still telling me no. They might be using that opportunity more frequently at first, but not as frequently as you would imagine. However, it's still worth it to me to let them tell me no. It's still worth it to me because if they say no, and I go, okay, fine, you don't have to give me a touch. You're not getting the treat. You're not getting the banana. You're not getting the Kong, but you don't have to give me the touch. If I do that, they go, oh, she actually responded to that. She actually let me tell her no. I didn't get the Kong that I wanted, but interesting that she responded to that. That way, they have that in their mind. And the next time we try to get them in a situation that they're not comfortable with, they know that they can still bring out that no and we'll respond to it. So what would be a circumstance that we would want the dogs to tell us no? A circumstance that they could tell us no would be that we're trying to take them to a dog park and they see all of the dogs in there and they're like, that's a lot for me to handle right now. And I can go in if you really want me to, but it's a lot and I don't think I want to. I, I would rather just stay out here and observe. That's important that we pay attention to that because if we ignore that, that no, that trigger, and we take them into the, to the dog park, likely they're gonna have some sort of flooding instance and a flooding instance is like uh, where you take the dog and it's so traumatic that they never do it again. They write it off right off the bat. So, um, that can seriously uh, have a damaging effect on their opinion of playtime with strangers' dogs or just their association of other dogs in general simply because we didn't acknowledge when they said, I don't want that or I don't want to do that. It's important that the dogs are able to communicate to us when they're not ready for something. If we take them into a situation that they're looking at going like, oh, I don't like that or I don't want him to touch me or I don't want to go play with that dog. That dog seems really not a good match for my personality type. Like they need to be able to tell us that. And 
if we haven't been giving them opportunities to tell us no in the past, they don't know that they can tell us no in those moments. And so they go in because they think they're obligated to because of that social pressure. I've had to do everything mom told me before, so I have to do this this time. And bad things happen, right? And now you have a reactive dog simply because you didn't let the dog tell you no. So yes, you want to be strategic with your nose and you want to make sure that if they're telling you no, they understand they're still losing out on that, that reinforcer. Like they, it's not a both thing. You don't tell me no and you get the Kong, right? Um, and we need to make sure that they understand how trade systems work. Like if we're asking for a touch, they need to understand that if you get scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Um, and I, I, I promise you, um, what the research says is that the dogs that understand how a no works and have enough experience saying no and not be feeling obligated to do something, if you're using the no correctly, the dogs will use their nose strategically. So they're only going to drop it in when they actually mean it. Um, but that's the key is like you want to make sure that they still understand that, that it's a trade system. So it's worth putting in a little extra time. It's worth letting them tell you no a couple of extra times at the beginning just so they understand. <clears throat> the other thing is, is a huge part of letting them tell you no is just re removing the obligation to perform. Like one of the main reasons is this is true for humans, true. Just, just think of like kids going to school. One of the reasons kids don't like going to school is because they're forced to, right? One of the reasons they don't like going is because they feel obligated to, like they have to do their homework. They have to get their, their uh, graduation. Like they have to do all of that. So just by removing that obligation for the dog to perform, you are making the dog enjoy the learning opportunity more. So he's much more likely to actively participate simply because he doesn't feel forced to. Um, and that is why I let the dogs tell me no. If you are a current client, please give your dog a treat for me. And if you liked the video, please like the video. Uh, I would love it if you subscribed as well. And... I'll see y'all soon.